Hello and welcome to this fabulous picture show, this special screening of Black Gold, documentary made by these two filmmakers. May I introduce Nick and Mark Francis. Now, for them, it's been a journey of about three years, hasn't it? I mean, this wasn't a little homework assignment. It was, it was quite a big task. Yeah, we started it in uh, 2003, and we finished it at uh, the beginning of 2006. And uh, it's currently screening around the world, and we've had some really interesting responses. So it'll be interesting to see what everyone makes of it here today. Brilliant. We hope you enjoy the film. See you at Q&A afterwards. Keen to tell their story from an Ethiopian point of view, the directors follow coffee trader today. Skeller. There is no coffee which is as quality as this coffee, but we are getting very low price. He wants to cut out some of the middlemen in the coffee trade and get a better deal for the 70,000 farmers in the cooperative union he represents. We have arranged it together. Black Gold contrasts their lives with the global coffee market. Coffee is the second most actively traded commodity in the world market. It looks at the new globalized coffee culture. And it's just amazing just how, how much, not just how much bigger we're getting, but just the lives that we're touching. And illustrates the social costs of the low coffee price falling since the big players ended regulation in the late 80s. But the film also shows the limits of the fair trade movement, which pays these farmers above the world, but not by much. Black gold isn't an incendiary piece of anti-corporate propaganda. Trade is more important to us than aid. But it's provoked Starbucks to launch a counter-offensive, from staff memos branding the film as inaccurate, to most recently on their website urging customers to feel good about drinking their coffee. The consumers can bring a change if awareness is given to consumers. The reaction to this film has been more than you perhaps predicted? The reaction has been quite overwhelming. I mean, it turns out that um, we've rustled uh, a few feathers <laughs> and that had began really in Sundance when Starbucks were turning up to the screenings, sending out press releases and trying to preempt what they considered could be a negative PR um, impression of what Starbucks is like. Because we did try for six months to get Starbucks to be interviewed in the film, but um, they declined. So we had a friendly meeting with the senior executives of the company in Seattle HQ um, shortly after. They wanted to tell us what they were doing um, to make the world a better place. Um, what questions did you ask Starbucks? Fundamentally, how much they pay their coffee growers and is it more than the next company? And that's the question that time and again, not just Starbucks, but Nestle and all the rest of them who we've asked these questions of refuse to answer. Are not the farmers better off um, for having Starbucks in in the world? Is actually actually creating um, creating demand for a product. Do, do, do you work for Starbucks? No, I don't. <laughs> I think your point's absolutely right. Um, our, our premier in London, the Ethiopian ambassador, came along and he said, you know, multinational companies are part of the problem, but they also be part of the solution. I don't think uh, they need not exist. I just think it's how they deal with and how they trade with countries like Ethiopia, which at the moment. Um, doesn't seem to be as fair as it could be. What do you think coffee means to the world? Sex. <laughs> coffee has been advertised as that, really. You know, come and come back to my place for a coffee and we'll have a great time. You saved my life the other night. <laughs> the dinner party. The coffee. Very successful. How can you ever thank me? I'll try and think of something. And I think it actually means different things to different people in Ethiopia, as you saw in the film. There... Having a cup of coffee is a ceremony. It's not just a neck a quick espresso and run off to work. <laughs> coffee is, is in the heart of people's culture, um, wherever you go. One of the images I'm carrying is that of the women sitting, sifting the coffee beans. We didn't know that actually happened. Tedesse said, come and check this room out. And as he opened the door, rolling with the camera, and suddenly we saw this sweatshop of 500 women on there for eight hours a day on less than half a dollar a day. I think for us that was the most alarming thing we, we, we'd seen during 
you know, our, our filming trip. That music wasn't background music, it was integral, it was the foreground was there. You know, most people are going to see the film on a big screen. Um, we want them to have an experience when they see the film. We were very concerned that it wasn't going to have a stereotypical African sound. But try and make a film much like the, the narrative that roots the experience into our consumer lifestyle and for somehow to try and create a score that reflected that. For the person who goes to the film and walks out of the film and thinks, what, what am I going to do about this? How would you like to connect them to the solution? You know, if awareness is given to consumers and there's hope for change, that was our objective to tell an entertaining, engaging story that's going to reach a widest audience possible to switch on about what's going on. Are you optimistic that things will change? Uh, I don't know wh whether that's a question for us or whether it's the question of the audience. I mean, um, sweatshop labour for the cotton industry wasn't, you know, wasn't exposed until there was a film there that highlighted the issue and made m consumers more aware and brought to bear light on the textile industry. You know, for us, it's just about trying to push out there as much as we can to ensure many people in the world get to see it. Just to let you all know that we did invite Starbucks and various other um, coffee companies to the screening. They politely declined, um, but I'm sure they'll see the film somewhere. Most of them have. <laughs> Could we please thank Nick and Mark Francis, here from Black Gold. Thank you.